Good evening, everyone. We'll call this meeting to order. Um, this is the Brawley City Council meeting, uh, meeting here this evening, the successor agency to the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. Be our regular meeting, kicking off here right at six o'clock. If we can get the roll call, please. The minutes will reflect all council members present. Very good, and we're gonna have invocation by Pastor Mike. Lord God, we want to just acknowledge you in this place and we want to thank you and praise your name for your protection, your direction over our lives. We thank you for being able to live a more peaceful life than other parts of our state, other parts of other cities in our nation. Lord, we've been spared from tragedies and like other places. And we ask that you bless and help and direct each and every one of the city councilmen to be able to make the decisions to better our, our city and for them to be able to provide more jobs through different businesses for the citizens of our city. For we ask and pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 I'll lead us in the pledge. Face the flag. Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as always, thank you, Pastor Mike, for leading us in the invocation. Take us to our first item. That will be the approval of the agenda. And we have a motion to approve. So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. We'll go to item number two. Item number two is our public appearances and comments. This is not to exceed four minutes. This is the time for the public to address the council on any items that are not appearing on the agenda and is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you when you step up to the microphone. Please state your name for the record. And just as a reminder, you are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. Please direct your questions uh, to the city council. Would anyone like to come up? Please. Hi, my name is Joanna Sanchez, and my husband recently sent a message to Mr. Hamby. I live on Willard Avenue, and my issue is the speed that cars passed, uh, that pass by, and um, it's a real big issue cause, because, I'm sorry, um, my, I had a car of mine totaled because cars pass by so fast. I mean, if you're going 15 to 20, there's no way a car could possibly be totaled. But it was a hit and run, unfortunately. It was really sad. And I can't let my son play in, in my front yard because I'm so scared that he'll want to go and get his ball from the street and he can't because these cars are passing by, I'm assuming at a good 45 miles an hour. And one of my neighbors had previously spoken about, told us about um, him wanting to see about maybe getting speed bumps, maybe the speed limit adjusted on the street, but the city told him that there was no funding for it. So what I'm asking now is if there is funding, if there's any way that we could be helped on that street because ever since they opened up the passage from cattle call to Vaughn's basically it's become a real issue and we love our neighborhood and it's such a great neighborhood to raise your kids but it's a really big issue mm -hmm. so what block excuse me uh, what block of Willard is it what's the address? I live on the 400 block 400 block mm -hmm. but I'm not the only one I mean everyone that's it's such a great block and I'm not the only one on that block that has mentioned it, so mm -hmm. if there's anything that could be done, it'd be greatly appreciated. Sanchez, thank you very much for that um, comment, and certainly what um, maybe something um, for us as staff to maybe to consider what, what potential alternatives. There are some things in place that, that do tend to slow down traffic, um, and again, it depends what they are. It could be anything from bike lanes to signage to other mechanisms but I think maybe that's worth talking and you're certainly not the only one I raised my kids on Willard and experienced that 10 years and that's before it went all the way through so I think and it's, it's, I think it's yeah. more it's worse because I can't pull out of my driveway and instead of them slowing down they speed up so they can go around my car 
yeah. and it's become a it's starting to become a really big issue. Noted. Understood. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. for your comment. Anyone else for public comment? Yeah, I'm Jim Graves. I'm co-owner of uh, Mojave Properties. Um, we own the properties across uh, the street from Western Liquor, and uh, um, we've had a recurring problem in getting our uh, getting Republic to pick up our trash. Um, I've come, you know, off and on, sporadically, you, you know, mentioned to them over the past four or five years. Uh, they, you know, they miss they they miss pickups. Um, <coughs> I complained about it last December because they left the bin completely out in the alley, blocking the. We've got a, a one of the big bins, and we've got the only bin on the on that block. Um, we put razor wire in back against the, the back of the enclosure, so it, uh, to discourage people from using it as a public restroom, uh, shooting up place, etc. Um, anyway, I complained because they left the bin out in. December, completely out in the alley, blocking the alley. Um, they they uh, addressed that, but they, they gave us a smaller bin, but the same pickup twice a week, which is not adequate. Um, there's trash in the alley, mm -hmm. sitting up there, and, and, uh, uh, and they've started skipping us. They skip us about once a month, okay? And since there's no slack because of the smaller bin and two pickups a week uh, if, if they don't if they don't pick it up we've got trash all over the alley mm -hmm. and you know and I come home nine o'clock at night and pick stuff you know I already have a job um, and uh, what I would like the city to do is simply put pressure you know all I want is the contract enforced all I'm asking for is for them to do what I pay them to do and whatever contract they've got with the city all I'm asking is that be enforced mm -hmm. and if it and if they're not willing to do this or not capable of doing it okay and I spoke to a few of you I the other day uh, I imagine that's a similar experience to sticking your head in the back of an FA 18 at takeoff um, um, the, um, but all, all I want though, all I want is the trash picked up. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Graves. You. Thank yeah. you. Maybe that gives us an opportunity to, to have um, Republic Services come in and just give an update. We can express some of the concerns because that's not the first time we're hearing something. And they haven't been here in quite some time. So that'd be nice. I mean, sure. Next meeting. Yeah. 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 Opportunity. Next meeting. Um, yeah. Maybe the Thank right you, Mr. Graves. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else for public comp? Sir, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, uh, Church of the Redeemer here in Brawley. I just want to thank you folks as leaders of the city and uh, thank whoever is here this evening for uh, a big blessing that uh, we've had an opportunity to have. This coming uh, Saturday is going to be 43 years ago that we came to be pastors here in Brawley. So, Wow. Just uh, wow. Uh, thank God that we, we can still do it, you know, and uh, uh, we pray for you. Uh, you need to pray for my wife and I because uh, we're empty nesters, you know. <laughs> and, and somebody told me that there's a ticket that's been bought for my wife and I to go to Hawaii because uh, our, <laughs> our, our son is going to have the third baby and it's a 15th grandchild. Mm. Wow. 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 <laughs> thank you, Pastor Mike. Wow. Quite an accomplishment. Any other public comment? Very good. Seeing none, we'll move to our next item, which will be item three, the consent agenda. These items are approved in one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent items to be considered separately at a, or at a time determined by the mayor. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent as written. We have, I'll second that. We have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. We'll move to our regular business items. That's item 4A. 
Um, this was going to be a presentation by Dr. Arturo Hernandez, as advertised in the, uh, in the agenda, but uh, Mr. Hernandez will not be here. Um, and this is for the U.S. Census Bureau Partnership Specialist. Um, and what Council will be considering tonight is a discussion of potential action to adopt a resolution, 2019, for the resolution of the City Council of the City of Brawley, California, recognizing the importance of the 2020 U.S. Census and commitment to ensuring a complete, fair, and accurate count of all Brawley residents. And I believe our City Manager will help frame this up. So uh, as Council uh, recently received a presentation before the Imperial County Division of the League of Cities, uh, the U.S. Census kickoff uh, is underway in Imperial County, and uh, a committee has been formed to improve uh, the accuracy of counts that will be undertaken in all of the communities of the Valley. Uh, each of our jurisdictions has been asked to play a more proactive role in addressing undercounts, undercounted areas uh, within our jurisdictional boundaries. Uh, Dr. Hernandez extends his regrets. He had uh, a change in scheduling that prevented him from, from coming, but I do hope that uh, in the future we can accommodate a presentation by him. Uh, the goal of the resolution is for the city to acknowledge the importance of an accurate count and also pledge its support to working with community stakeholders to improve the count uh, that will be undertaken for the city of Brawley. Uh, the U.S. Census estimates that each person not counting, uh, not counted, amounts to a $2,000 uh, loss in revenues for uh, state and federal uh, resources assigned to our community. So, uh, getting an accurate count is important to the city's bottom line, and uh, I hope to be working with a number of city departments to convene our stakeholder group, along with Imperial Valley Housing Authority. Um, as we begun to take a look at the undercounted area in Brawley, it really is north central uh, Brawley. And I think there are some great opportunities to work uh, with other agencies to, to help uh, generate positive messaging around it and, and get uh, individuals counted in this next uh, effort. I agree with that. So I'd make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion, second. I'm looking around. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. We'll move to our next item, which will be item 4B. This will be discussion and potential action for the adoption of resolution 2019, resolution of City Council of the City of Brawley, California, identifying watch guard video as the sole source provider for authorizing the purchase of audio visual uh, video recording equipment at the Brawley Police Department in the amount of $30,370 with 100% reimbursement by Homeland Security Investigations, otherwise known as HSI, State and Local Overtime <coughs> Fund, backup material on pages 223 and 268. We have our chief here for the presentation. Good evening, Robert Sawyer, Honorable Mayor and Members of Council. Um, we have a unique opportunity to, as you mentioned a moment ago, receive 100% reimbursement on the purchase of some unique equipment that Brawley does not currently have. Um, the equipment being sought is the ability to audio and video record our interview rooms, a total of three within the department, um, and be able to preserve evidence of, the, of a particular nature when it comes to uh, whether it be admissions of guilt, uh, just mere interactions sometimes and things of that nature that can be presented at trial or used during administrative hearings or um, a wide variety of, of different uh, uses. WatchGuard was selected as a sole source vendor after uh, careful consideration. We've had three vendors come here locally and, and give presentations to our uh, IT director, to our investigators, myself, and then our command staff as well. Um, one of the unique things that WatchGuard offers um, is the ability to store the media in the cloud versus on site. Therefore, it negates the, the need to have a racked solution um, behind the closed door in our IT department. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot easier for our IT staff of one uh, for the entire city to manage um, and really is kind of a, a turnkey solution in that regard. Um, above and beyond the cloud storage, a very unique feature that we saw only with this particular vendor um, at, this, at this level is the ability to share our data, our evidence, if you will, with the district attorney's office electronically. 
So really what would happen is we would generate the video, we would determine that it is evidence in nature, and then we would send a link via an email to the district attorney's office for them to click on and be able to view the video. The other vendors that were considered, uh, not just the two that were mentioned in the staff report, but several others that we did some research on that we weren't able to meet with, uh, require the burning of a CD or a DVD and the submission of evidence in that format. And having come from an agency that utilized that, I can tell you there's a wall full of CDs and DVDs um, at the agency that I left to come here, and I was fortunate enough to come here too. Um, and we want to avoid that. It's a very time-consuming process. It's a costly process. And it's just not feasible for the staffing levels that we have at the Brawley Police Department. Um, so that, that's one of two things that really sets WatchGuard apart. Um, and the other item that's mentioned in the staff report is record after the fact. Um, so the, the system records on a loop. Let's say that an officer placed an individual into a holding cell and hadn't had the opportunity uh, to turn the audio and video recording on, and they got assaulted in the process um, <coughs> while they were unhandcuffing unhandcuffing them or placing them on a bench or things of that nature. That recording would still be there. The audio would not be present, but the video itself would still be available for us to retrieve. And it records on a loop, so it's not something we're storing uh, for a long, lengthy period of time. It, it's overwritten. It's, uh, it's determined not to be evidentiary in nature. But once it's evidence, or determined to be evidence, we can go back and actually recover that and present that in court for uh, evidence purposes and for trial. So that's the reason why we chose WatchGuard as the vendor of choice. And again, we have the blessing of Homeland Security. <coughs> we have concurrence with our IT department and finance department as well. Very, very good, and, and again, plenty of uh, uh, material in the backup. I'll, I'll open up council while we have the chief here on the topic. Any questions? Uh, no, quick, uh, just a quick question, chief. With respect to the agreement, is it something that's ongoing because it is a subscription agreement? Is that something that you plan on continuing to, to have? Question. So the the agreement as written, and it's we're still going through the review process. I just received a updated version with our legal counsel's uh, suggested changes late this afternoon and I forwarded that on. Hopefully we'll be able to come to terms with the agreement should the council decide that, that this is a project we can move forward with. Uh, this is a five-year turnkey cost. Mm. So the first five years is completely covered by Homeland Security Investigations with no cost to the city. Year six and beyond there may be some need for refresh of equipment um, or things of that nature. So. We didn't want to go past the five-year period, but we're confident that for, for five years from the date that it's authorized moving forward, it's 100% uh, cost recovery on our part. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just uh, wanted to say that it's it's really um, a great opportunity to be able to get this funding and to be able to use modern te technology. I was really surprised to <coughs> to see that we were still having to have you do the audio recording and, and all that. So that's really great. Thank you. I'll make the motion. Sure. To second approve the motion. purchase. I'll second the motion. So we have a motion. We have a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. And I think you're, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to stay right there for the next item? Or? Yes, sir. Second, I have Tyler. Okay. It'll be uh, item 4C in the agenda. Uh, this will be a discussion potential action to adopt resolution number 2019, resolution of the city of Brawley. Identifying Motorola Solutions as the sole source provider for authorizing the purchase of next-gen radio equipment at the police department in the amount of six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars and ninety. I'm sorry, six hundred and sixty-five and ninety-nine dollars and four cents. Backup material on pages two sixty-nine, three twenty-two. Chief. Good evening again, Robert Sawyer, Police Chief. Um, this is part of a long-term project that's been uh, part of the infrastructure landscape for a number of years. We are coming to the, the end of the cycle for analog radio systems here in Imperial County. The ability for us to transition to digital uh, has been present for about the last year. Our staff at the Brawley Police Department has been working with IVECA and RCS San Diego, which are our partners in the regional radio system. And there's been a lot of man hours um, worked on this project. A lot of number crunching and everything else. The, the purchase price is very expensive and we understand that but this is something that moves us into the future for hopefully the next 25 plus years um, it's the analog system will come to an end of service here uh, right around september of this year so the need for us to move forward with this project and transition from analog to digital with the backbone of the project is pretty urgent at this particular time um, i will say that being last to the table sometimes is best for us because uh, while other agencies here in Imperial County have already taken part of the upgrade, 
Uh, we've had the benefit of looking back and seeing some of the mistakes that were made and some of the things that were overlooked or not accounted for. Um, and we've benefited from that. And we've been able to speak with the El Centro Police Department, the Bureau <coughs> County Sheriff Department, who've already made the transition. And this is a total project cost, uh, which is unique. The, the Sheriff Department in El Centro ran into some issues that they were not aware of. Um, I don't believe Motorola themselves were aware of initially. Um, and that's with a logging system that records the audio for the radio traffic and the telephone um, traffic coming into dispatch and within the police department. Um, initially, when the other agencies made their upgrade, they retained the analog system. Unfortunately, that's not something that's going to work for them. And what started as a $434,000 project for us ends up at $665,000 as a result of the need to upgrade the logging system in addition to all the consoles and radios within the dispatch center. Um, so the way that the upgrade works is there's 13 radios uh, up in the radio room upstairs, uh, the area where we just replaced the air conditioning unit for. The 13 radios are all tuned to a specific frequency, whether it be Calipat Fire, Westmoreland Fire, Brawley Fire, all the different police departments, all of our contract cities, in addition to mutual aid frequencies. Uh, they are required to be there and uh, with those specific channels in place in order for us to operate in the time of any type of emergency and be able to move forward. Raleigh's unique in that we operate as what they refer, refer to as an RF site, we're a standalone site, not yet plugged into the RCS network, as some of our fellow agencies are. Um, this expansion allows us to, at no additional cost, uh, take part of the network services that are offered by RCS San Diego in the near future, hopefully within the next 365 days. Um, currently, there's no other way for us to, to move forward in terms of we're not able to get onto the network because their system has not been completely upgraded yet and they're going through that, they, they just don't have the expansion abilities. Uh, when their upgrade is complete within the next 90 days, uh, they will have the ability to, for us to move forward with that, and then once our build-out is complete, uh, completed within the next 365 days, not only will we have all new radios within the, the radio room, we'll have new consoles within the dispatch center, we'll be 100% compliant with federal laws and regulations uh, regarding the uh, cross-communication abilities, and we will be ready to go on and plug into the network, of the, which is RCS. And what that does for us is it allows a access, immediate access, without kind of piggybacking off other technology to the different radio frequencies that are available here in Imperial County and San Diego counties as well for mutual aid and things of that nature. Very good. Thank you, Chief. And uh, obviously opening up to questions uh, on this expenditure, um, as well as thank you on the upgrade. Uh, Council, any questions? Sorry. I've got a few questions about it. Um, being that it is such a large expenditure in a, in a difficult financial time. Um, my questions have to do with um, the share of cost. It's, it's spelled out in the backup materials. Um, it, it spells out the fire services, fire department for, well, maybe not. It says Calipatria contract services and Westmoreland contract services. Is that for both PD and fire department in both of those cities? Yes, so that's the total cost for those cities for both fire and police. And we've met, so far I've met with Chief Menita from Westmoreland. I have attempts and phone calls in to meet with uh, Chief Mata. I'm hoping to do that in the very near future. We offered to break down, uh, break down the cost for fire and police departments for the, their agencies as well, should they decide to. But mm -hmm. that's just a round figure for us to be able to, to be comfortable with. That's the total number of volume, or that represents the volume of calls for service that are handled for those respective cities, mm -hmm. uh, both inclusive of fire and police. That's an, an average of over, over a few years, or how do they? We do. We run the statistics on a three-year uh, average. That way we ensure that we encapsulate everything as far as change of mm -hmm. calls for service and kind of get a big picture view. Sure. And that's the same formula that's utilized to uh, negotiate the contracts for service we provide in the terms of dispatch services. Okay. I was wondering if maybe a, popu a population-based uh, share of cost would be I mean, it would work out better in our favor anyway. <laughs> Possibly, but that's not what we utilize to, yeah. to negotiate the contract, mm -hmm. so we we'll stuck with the same formula. Because it's a defensible one in our minds. Right, right, yeah. Our minds. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the urgency is that we're the, last, we're the last dispatch center that hasn't gone to this, to the new all digital system. Second to last in Imperial County. I believe Calexico is just a few footsteps behind okay. us. Um, they were looking for some information from Motorola that Motorola represented met with them this week. And I know that they're working on the project, but I, we're a little further advanced than they are. Mm -hmm. there, there are a few smoke signals behind us. Yes. <laughs> they're stretching Literally. that string a little bit tighter on the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
one other question I have that isn't related to this, but we we did purchase some license plate readers for uh, to be mounted on um, some of the patrol cars. So there was a regional purchase done using a FEMA grant known as Stone Garden. Mm -hmm. um, that was a regional project that purchased 47 mobile camera systems to be mounted on police vehicles throughout the Imperial County. I believe we have nine here in Brawley and the rest are distributed uh, across the county depending on size of the force and the number of uh, police vehicles they put out in, at a particular uh, shift because it doesn't do any good to have them sitting in the park unless right, yeah. that's the formula that was used. Have those been any, any significant source of revenue through seizures or anything like that? So I have a spreadsheet that I'd be glad to go back and revisit and provide some information on. There has been some, some asset forfeiture uh, realized as a result of the use of those. Um, not from the city of Brawley. I know the sheriff department's had a success story with within their border crime suppression team, um, and I know that some of our federal agencies are looking to add on to the system. The hope is that this will not. It was originally purchased with five agencies in mind that were identified by um, our border patrol partners who administer the Stone Garden Grant. Um, our hope is to grow that even further and cap, uh, capitalize on our federal partners and, and expand the system and expand participants within the system. Um, so there's the potential for that. As far as the actual seizures, I can tell you that it's been um, an outstanding source of, of law enforcement uh, tools for us here in Brawley. We've had a um, what was going to be a home invasion robbery uh, that, where the individual went to a uh, particular area within the city, parked the stolen vehicle they were driving, got out with a um, rifle, and were confronted and basically taken into custody. Uh, the officers in the area that responded from our agency were not aware that he'd driven that stolen vehicle into the area. Um, a sheriff department deputy who had been responding to a call for assistance in that call uh, had a license plate reader in their vehicle that alerted to the vehicle, and thereby we tied him to the stolen vehicle. We were also able to backtrack and put him in a convenience store here in the city of Brawley where we believe he was intending to, to commit an armed robbery at that location as well. So there's a lot of success stories behind it, but when it comes to revenue, I'd have to go back and sure. look at that. I'd be glad to report back at a later time or meet with the private. Thanks. Sorry, that was a little. No, no problem. Signed. I can yep. speak about our successes. Thank you. Uh, additional yes, questions? I don't know. Uh, just uh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, uh, go ahead, George. Uh, just with respect to the, I, I know it's new equipment, but is there going to be, you know, obviously training? Is that part of the cost? And so really, it'll it'll act in much the same manner that we do that it does currently. Um, what will happen in the first phase is you'll see there's two phases of rollout. The radios themselves will be replaced up in the radio room. And there's a, um, forgive my lack of uh, understanding of some of the technology utilized, but there's a, a mechanism in place that will translate that radio signal, the digital radio so signal, to the network system in, in RCS and allow us to work in the interim. Eventually, when the build out of the, con uh, of the consoles and dispatch take place, that will be removed or taken offline and we'll be able to plug right into the network in addition to having a, retaining our standalone site. Mm -hmm. So uh, really it, the nice part about this is even if our network uh, connectivity went down via the T1 line or microwave, whatever source is, is utilized moving forward, and everything else shut down in the event of an earthquake or natural disaster, we would still have standalone service as long as the building <coughs> at the police department was standing and that infrastructure was in place, we would still be able to communicate. We're not, we're not dependent on outside sources um, as some of our, our neighboring cities are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and Chief has outlined already, um, and I don't know if you're going to ask us about yeah. that. Uh, yeah. just, uh, but again, just for the public's benefit, this has this, this item, I believe, came to council approximately a year ago. Maybe um, it's it's actually been coming uh, in every budget cycle That's when right. we do pre-planning for the <laughs> RCS backbone upgrade, yeah. and then this was the portion that relates to the communications center. So I was just like to years. remind, just you know, again, those that are listening, this has been ongoing. So we've known this is coming, so I'm, I'm very happy to hear. Um, this is definitely maybe a last in, has its benefits, but uh, um, we also know at that time the cost that was projected was likely going to be higher. Um, which it certainly was, but just um, I know it's in our backup in our minutes, but just w one more time, just kind of the highlight of the uh, of the total compilation or, or different funds that are putting this together, not just the cost sharing, but there's, as you outlined, some so, of the federal funds as well as yes. In your package, you'll notice there's a mention of federal asset forfeiture funds yeah. uh, that we currently have on hand that could uh, potentially be used to pay for a portion of the upgrade. Okay. And there the, are ex exemptions to that, such as fire service. Yeah. Uh, federal asset forfeiture only applies to. Uh, law enforcement services and, and uh, communication centers. 
So we can we can finance a large, which you'll see is the largest portion of, of the pie there, um, cost-wise. We can we can finance a portion of that with asset forfeiture funds, uh, but there are those exemptions. Now our neighboring cities, Westmoreland and Calipat, that are included in the in the upgrade. Yeah. Should they care to do so, they could do the same thing for the police services, and we would be happy to work with them on the percentage breakdown. And they can leverage federal asset forfeiture funds to pay for that per uh, percentage. There's also other grants out there. I know Westmoreland is considering uh, one of the other COPS grants that, that's out there um, for funding source, and uh, we're more than happy to work with Westmoreland as well. It's fantastic. And I guess the question beyond, beyond all that with that comment, is there any portion that's general fund? Um, uh, expenditure and that I, 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 I let our finance director. Finance director. <laughs> oh, now you want to back yeah. out. Yeah. 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 I brought the back up. <laughs> okay. Tyler Salcedo, uh, assistant police chief. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, finance director, City of Raleigh. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to continue to uh, work with the city manager and the chief on the amount of the, uh, federal asset forfeiture, the amounts that we're going to use. Uh, from my perspective, the financial challenges that are ahead. Uh, might require most all of it, but of course that decision will be made yeah. in conjunction with the three of us. Doesn't, that, doesn't free it up for other things. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, there's yeah. all. The, yeah. yeah. So um, this is just one man's opinion. Yeah. Um, I, the worst case scenario, financing wise, is in your packet. I, saw I have, that. I have reached out to uh, multiple sources. I have one confirmed better rate for any amount of, or all of it. Um, so we're we'll continuing to do that. I'm exploring other options as well. So. Um, that's where we are on the financing piece on it, and, and all that would, any of the finance piece would be general fund, yes. Is that but, clear? But uh, there is like a seven year, five year, three year option. Yeah. It's a lease, like uh, a lease buyback, I imagine. Is that what it is? is it, it's, just a, it's just a regular flat, that the, what's okay. quoted there is annual payments. Yeah. Motorola is even willing to work us with us on cash flow, monthly yeah. payments, whatever you have, but I would recommend, I would recommend the five year on that because uh, one, the interest rate's the best, and like I said, we have already have a better interest rate quoted to me on that. Mm. Um, so uh, that would be five-year. So we'll be working to take all measures possible to reduce yep. impacts on the general fund. Yep. Uh, we know fire for certain, that portion will be carried by the general fund, mm. but if you look at uh, financing it over a five-year term, it's a lot more attainable than uh, one year's uh, payment. Very good. Thank you. No, that's very helpful. Um, it mentions a lease rate, but that's this is not a leased. These are not. This is not leased equipment. This is just that's a rate that they're willing I to give. I believe it's no, it's a finance uh, yeah. purchase. This, this equipment is ours, and at the end of the back. at the end of the contract, whether it be the three, five, or seven year term, the equipment will be owned by the city of Albany. Or or a lease <coughs> buyback where it acts just like if you're buying it, then they sell it back to you for like a dollar at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And that's, um, a, that's another yeah. reason not to do, I'm sorry, to do the seven year because of the technology by the time seven years comes around. Right. And we're still paying on right. something. Why not? That might be obsolete. <laughs> I, my my only my concern was also uh, regarding how much of the general fund would be necessary to to spend, and um, so will we? Because you don't really know the figure at this point, we're going to be looking at the uh, federal asset for, forfeiture fund first. Uh, will we be getting an update once we know how much of that is available and how much may be coming from the of general course. fund? Of course, yes, for sure, okay. and and it it will come up in the continued budget budget, budget okay. process. So, yeah. but we would not even if we. If we went with this and with the financing plan, the first payment, the first annual payment would not be due this fiscal year. With Motorola, yes. That's but with that's continued negotiations with the others, and, okay. and uh, um, they're, they're pretty flexible so far. Okay. Yeah. But, but concrete, only the Motorola so far, because right. we, we haven't got to that part of it yet. I'm just more discussing rates and terms and what they would need from me for, uh, as information to uh, be able to finance. Very good. And I, think and I guess one other, I'm sorry, just one other thing. Um, since we're uh, discussing um, with Calpatria and Westmoreland, um, that's another, um, I think as, as a council, I would like to know, or we would like to know if there's any issues with that. Uh, once uh, it's negotiated that they're going to be uh, paying their share. So uh, what we've done with similar upgrade topics in the past is uh, work with them on payment terms that uh, they can successfully accomplish. So if they chose to finance the portion that they're responsible for over the five-year term, 
we would just also expect them to cover the cost of interest associated. So all the discussions have centered around that. I have reached out to the city manager of Calipat. Uh, Chief has had a great discussion um, and may be presenting before the city council here in the very new f near future in Westmoreland. Um, th these are very difficult projects to accomplish for all of our small cities, yep. uh, not just us, but our, our sister cities um, in the area. And uh, what we think this provides as a recommendation is a method and a pathway to get there, whether it's the one that they ultimately choose or not. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it to them, but giving them the options is very helpful as opposed to saying in year one, the entire lump sum is due and payable. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This will be presented at West. My understanding is the chief of police for Westmoreland will be presenting tomorrow night, and uh, we've made ourselves available at the following meeting to answer any questions that their city council might have. So uh, we've extended that, and we will do the same thing for uh, Calipat should they desire. Thank you, chief. Thank you. Which really this is a big step for the north county, uh, north side of the county. So very good. Thank you, chief. Um, without any further questions or comments, uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, <coughs> motion carries. Very good. That'll end a regular business uh, portion of the agenda. We'll move on to item five, departmental reports. Departmental report uh, 5A will be personnel and risk management department. Honorable Mayor, Shirley Council Benias. members, Shirley Benias, personnel and risk management. Report is on page 323, if I could correctly uh, we still have background for ba uh, police officers and a dispatcher and backgrounds at this point <coughs> and the assistant streets and utility supervisor is still in progress any questions and oh by the way we're hiring 40 young people on Friday to handle the summer day camp and we've already hired as you can see in your report numerous lifeguards to handle all the swimming that will be going on with this heat, hotter weather. Of course, I'll answer any questions I'm able to. Any questions, comments, council? Seeing none, thank you thank very you. much, Shirley. 5B will be uh, Public Works Department. Uh, we've had emergency construction at the Brawley <coughs> Water Treatment Plant to replace components of two sedimentation basins and traffic signal near Cesar Chavez and Main Street. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, Guillermo Sillas, Public Works Director. Uh, we continue on the process of um, the water treatment plant component uh, replacement for sedimentation basins. Uh, the, the emergency continues. We are in the process to uh, agree on the documents with the company that will be performing the job. Uh, not much to report than that we are on the boring part of uh, documentation. We haven't started the action, let's say, on the plant. But uh, we are um, alert for anything that might happen to the plant, so the chief and uh, the assistant uh, are, you know, taking care of uh, the plant. So no problem so far. Very good. Thank you for the report and update. Any questions, council? Nope. Seeing none. Thank you, Guillermo. We'll move um, to. Oh, traffic signal. Yeah, oh, Caesar Chavez. Sorry. Traffic signal. Yes, I'm sorry. Traffic signal. Did I miss that? Okay. Okay. He's moving on. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. we're going to talk about the traffic okay. signal next. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. right. Yes, um, as you are aware, on May 4th, uh, the traffic signal at the Main Street and Caesar Chavez uh, start. Uh, I mean, it stopped uh, working properly. And uh, since the city of El Centro provides uh, maintenance services for the traffic signals for the city, they were contacted and they did an inspection. However, they could not uh, find the problem. And they replaced uh, a couple of times the control box. However, they couldn't find uh, the solution. And they contacted uh, Caltrans uh, technicians to do an inspection, and they did and they recommended to replace the, the uh, complete cabinet uh, because uh, it's very old and there's no um, spare parts anymore. And the uh, city of El Centro uh, obtained a quote from a company called McCain that supplies uh, those type of equipment, and, but they just provide uh, parts. 
and it's in the vicinity of $15,000, just materials. However, the lead time for that uh, piece of equipment is from 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, Cedarfield Centro recommended us to check with uh, Select Electric uh, that they might have some parts uh, in stock because their purchase uh, policy does not allow them to purchase that equipment and give it to the city and then charge them uh, or charge us for, for that. So we check with Select Electric, they don't have it. And uh, so we ask for a full quote, including materials and labor. We are waiting for that to have another uh, quote uh, to the full replacement. Uh, today, I contacted uh, the Caltrans uh, District 11 engineer to see if they have uh, some uh, equipment like that that, they can, that we can borrow from um, San Diego County or uh, any, anywhere else. So they will try to look for that and to help us uh, to borrow that equipment. And once we um, uh, purchase that, so we can return it if, if that is the case. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I may just add a couple more details to Guillermo's presentation, um, I think the big takeaways are this will be uh, a project in excess of my signature authority at 15000 We do have Main Street relinquishment funds available for uh, this purpose. Uh, Main Street, when we took responsibility for it, we, we also took responsibility yeah. for the traffic signals. Mm -hmm. um, we are guesstimating in the realm of fifteen to 30000 all in, uh, so we'll have an action item to you in the future. It will likely, because of the uh, very extended timetables involved with ordering, we'll be exhausting all measures we can to expedite, which means uh, it it's quite possible I would authorize the expenditure before an action item comes mm -hmm. to the council, so we would come to you with a ratifying action. Yeah. Um, and uh, just would like to make you aware that we're pursuing all avenues available to, to see how we can get it accomplished. Uh, we were talking about ways we could be sure to get the information out, and one way would be visiting the four businesses at the four corners there and being sure that folks are aware what's our pathways known, how we're, we're going to get across the finish line uh, with those time frames, uh, we'd be happy to do that, that leg work. Yeah, we've been getting some inquiries, so maybe we want to do a press release or maybe we want to do notify those businesses, get the word of mouth out, because okay. people are asking all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you can bust out your uh, safety patrol well, vest, maybe, maybe <laughs> fourth grade. Maybe you can do a, a Facebook yeah, That's true, maybe yeah. you can do it out there. Maybe yeah. you, like you normally control. do to give yeah. kind of updates, yeah. you could give them a little update on that. The warrior your safety patrol. My safety vest. Traffic. I've got a hard hat. Too. We'll, we'll start off with we're getting in the traffic signal business, because apparently just in time, Make it Product a delivery is Why don't we just right. make it a four way stop industry. and yeah. forget it? So. I'm kidding, how 10, <laughs> 10 week lead time? Yeah. But it's probably old equipment. Though. Just truck yeah. 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 Sam so. said he wants to eliminate the signal and, and put in a roundabout it. there. there roundabout or four way stop. We yeah. actually there had was a proposal a design right here. not that long I ago know. to remove uh, all the traffic signals in downtown Brawley yeah. and, and return them to stop signs. That's an option to us. It slowed traffic in a different way. It would slow traffic down. And it would also make a four-way stop. Sometimes building. traffic would flow maybe better. Yeah. We're not required to maintain it you as a state the highway. Design. Correct. So I'm leaving, losing control of the meeting. I know, right? <laughs> it's cheaper than thirty thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> and put all the signals on Willard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put there the signal go. lights on Willard. <laughs> yeah. we'll get on See, resolution. Uh, okay. I think Thank you. Uh, Goodbye. From, from what I've I'm going to drop the microphone. Right on Willard all the time. I don't know. Um, Thank you, Irma. I think, I think that, that, was it. that those are all the questions, so I appreciate that presentation. We'll move to uh, one more departmental report. Uh, item uh, C, Finance Department. Public meeting scheduled, coming up for the budget process and piggyback contracting opportunities for vehicle acquisitions, fleet maintenance, and fueling. That comes out of the finance budget. <laughs> Good evening again. Tyler Salcedo, Finance Director, City of Brawley. Uh, my first... Uh, Informational item is the audit and budget timeline update. Um, currently, staff, uh, we're in the process of uh, wrapping up the review for FY17-18 uh, of all the financial data and the general ledger uh, accounts through all the funds. Uh, every, there's a lot of uh, different general ledger account numbers that we're reviewing. Like I said, we're mostly all the way through that. Uh, auditors are scheduled for field work July 8th through 19th. 
that's two weeks. They'll be here field work. Um, after that, they go uh, back to their office and put together the financials, uh, the audit, uh, and depending on the length of the audit, uh, review by the partners, it's a two, two partner process, the managing partner and then the, uh, a different partner for a different set of eyes. That can take anywhere from a couple weeks to a month, but we, are, uh, we had a phone call with them on Monday and we have regularly scheduled weekly calls scheduled from here on out. I already informed them that we're going to put pressure on them to try to uh, speed up that review process because it can be done. Um, mm -hmm. So um, what the schedule looks like from my perspective, uh, depending on the council's availability and the desire to have a special meeting, the, the, last, uh, the last two weeks of August potentially for a final audit review, uh, uh, present adoption, excuse me. Um, if not that, then the next scheduled uh, meeting is September 3rd. And also at that time, I, I'm proposing to uh, approve the F no, FY1920 budget at the same time because we'll have the, the uh, I will have the majority of, of the audit financial information draft version and, and would be aware of any uh, pending items that would need to be uh, brought to council. Um, I know that's not the most ideal, uh, but at this point in time, it is what it is. That's what we have. Um, that's the schedule we have. Uh, if I may, just there's there's uh, two factors that maybe well one one important factor that maybe has slowed down the process to what uh, the council was expecting. I know they're expecting uh, June uh, this actually this date for the approval. Uh, the main factor is me, uh, my comfort level with the financial data. Uh, the information, the confirming of balances, the review of important bond documents, contracts, etc. cetera. Um, I, I need to be able to fully comprehend what happened back then and to explain those details to the auditing team and to, and to council. And, and so I, I, uh, I've taken my time. I'm directing staff. Well, I need more information than that. So uh, the main culprit's me on, on maybe not meeting that June 4th deadline. Uh, one other smaller factor that maybe it, it's uh, slowed it down a bit is, is uh, any accounting uh, level staff, what I call accounting level, that have to understand audits and accounting and that thing. It's basically management, uh, assistant manager myself, and we have one uh, staff, uh, senior accountant assistant. They're all been here less than a year, including myself. So there's not that historical perspective mm -hmm. that we have. So anything we try to research, we're, we're kind of starting from scratch, reaching out to uh, city manager, different department heads, looking for in our files. So that takes time. It's just a slower process. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal is in the future, uh, the audit is not going to be delayed or the budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that to be a very uh, attainable goal uh, from what I've seen so far. We're going to get back on track. So um, that's it relating to audit. I can <coughs> go straight into the budget if there's any questions. Any questions on that? Or? If, if along continue. with the delays, you can find some extra money, that's <laughs> yeah. be okay. That's We're looking at that. Yeah. 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 We'll give you extra time. Yeah. In yeah. <laughs> well, I got to make that promise. <laughs> um, as far as the budget, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, the budget is uh, both, the, both the general fund, special and enterprise funds are, are where they at. Uh, uh, we're continuing to, work with, continuing to work with the executive team and staff on, on closing the budget gaps, particularly the general fund. Mm. Um, some areas that we're working on is uh, with the cost recovery areas. I believe it's uh, going to be bringing you, uh, coming to you for some consideration on those areas. Mm. Um, also, uh, reviewing of uh, non-compensation related expenses and the potential to reduce those or eliminate some of them, at least temporarily or uh, into the short-term future across the board, every department. Um, that's one thing we're going to look at. Um, I've also, also started to talk to certain uh, department heads about uh, a different look at overtime, um, reducing this, uh, how the on-call is to work, who's available for overtime, that kind of things, and, and consideration of the financial challenges that we have, and maybe changing that up a bit. Um, also on the table, uh, temp labor, just having to maybe eliminate all that to help close the gap. And, and then last, last resort, but we have started the discussions to investigate uh, potential staff reduction plans to help try to close that gap. Those are all in just 
you know, that's not saying that that's the route we're going, but those are all things under consideration. A um, couple of factors that are uh, going to affect the budget. To what I, you know, the budget's a living, a living document in my mind. We prepared it back, the general fund back in April, May, whatever that was. Uh, we know more now than we know then. We know some things less than we know then. For example, uh, the status of labor negotiations, for example. That changes week to week. Um, and so we build the budget. Oh, well, maybe that assumption wasn't correct. We got to go back that out. So it, it's, it's a living That's document. And then uh, the, also the other item is, is, uh, which affects the general fund uh, immensely is the cash and loot, which kind of relates to the labor, labor negotiations there too. So um, getting a resolution on those two items is, is it will be, uh, it's hard to come up with a budget, final budget until those two things are at least tentatively agreed upon. So any questions on that? Council? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Thank you, um, Tyler, for again, that, I think that update's helpful, certainly um, bringing us kind of to current state. So. I did just want to mention that, um, Tyler did mention, thank you for the presentation, by the way. Um, he mentioned some dates of final adoption in late August. I won't be here the final week, and, um, and so I just wanted to let you know in advance. Um, that might be a challenge for me just because I won't be here starting the 23rd through the end of the month. So um, just maybe, for that. maybe a consideration. Yeah, I, I might have some of those. And I know we haven't had a scheduling discussion, but all I would ask is maybe our city manager will go through um, maybe perhaps the next meeting or something. We'll, we'll have options that we sure. can discuss and come okay. to some maybe. conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. That, we that usually, we yeah. usually go dark in August. Right. Usually yeah. that's when we all kind of plan for vacations. Okay. And so, yeah. but we'll have to work around it. So. Yep. Oh, Rosanna said I couldn't have any vacation. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. true. Not until the budget. <laughs> Not until the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Not until after, I said yeah. we, but... Yeah. <laughs> present present company. Hey, he can't yeah. have vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Any other questions? I, well, I, I know he mentioned it, um, and so you're going to be doing a presentation or, or maybe our city manager on the cost, re on the cost recovery recommendations. Those will be done at our next meeting or? Uh, there are several efforts underway. The one that is uh, most substantively moved forward is around fire cost recovery and um, we believe we'll be in a good position to have a package ready with enabling ordinances inside of 30 days. Oh, good. So, yeah. good. Okay. Good to hear. So that's on that front. Um, the Parks and Rec front continues to, to be an ongoing effort. Not difficult to capture the 100% cost recovery on the high, uh, highly enrolled and often overly subscribed adult leagues or uh, even youth leagues with 100% participation. Mm -hmm. Far more challenging on other fronts to gain cost recovery relative to uh, actual the cost. actual expense associated yeah. with delivering the service. And other cities are also looking at their fees, mm -hmm. so just we're not the only ones. So. Yes. As I understand, and actually at the request of the Mayor Pro Tem, I did pursue a conversation with uh, my counterpart in El Centro. Uh, they are using an outside consultant to establish their entire rate structure for the new pool facilities. And um, they'll be looking toward this topic of what is a reasonable cost recovery versus what prices people out of use, which it, it's kind of a careful balancing act because if, you're, if you aim to accomplish greater cost recovery and end up running off the users, you still have the asset that you're responsible for maintaining. So um, it's, it's a challenge. Try and we'll to continue make that point. Working on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Tyler has one other item relative to the sure. budget that okay. uh, could be uh, an area that we more heavily pursue in the near future. Yes, um, as, as the same manager stated, we're, uh, I'm here to update the council on a potential further action item. Um, with the, um, I'm sure the council is aware of the retirement in uh, the uh, maintenance, uh, the maintenance uh, department, the, the shop foreman has retired at the end of May, thereabouts. Uh, so with that, uh, it's given the city an opportunity to uh, explore t alternatives uh, to the current maintenance operation configuration and, and also 
uh, to consider or look into some options to modernize the, the vehicle fleet and to potentially reduce uh, maintenance costs and fuel costs. Uh, we're currently in discussions with Enterprise Fleet Management uh, to determine this, uh, the feasibility of entering into a vehicle leasing and fleet management program. Uh, it would be piggybacked on a qualified uh, bid through SourceWell. I, I can't remember what it was called before, but it's currently SourceWell. It's a corporate, uh, cooperative purchasing program, uh, which we're currently a member, the city's a member of, and that would eliminate the need for a bid process on that. Uh, some of the key objectives, goals in, in working together with enterprise fleet management would be to uh, maxify, maximize cash flow opportunities, which uh, means like uh, lease versus purchasing, extending out that cash flow instead of taking an upfront mm -hmm. hit. Um, they're, op they're what they would be called uh, open-ended leases, where at the end of the term you have the option to continue to lease it, extend it. Uh, there's a re residual amount to buy, or even to turn that back in as a down payment towards another vehicle. And uh, so that's one way. Uh, of course, maybe I should list this first. One of the key objectives is to increase uh, employee safety. Some of our vehicles are pretty old, they're outdated. This would help freshen the fleet sooner than later. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a list buried in here somewhere that uh, some of them don't meet the safety standards currently that are required on some of those vehicles. So. Uh, that's another thing. Um, and of course, like I stated before, reduce vehicle-related costs, uh, a more modern, fuel-efficient fleet. Uh, fuel expenses will go down. Um, one potential uh, item that the enterprise is, is offering is, is uh, maximizing the returns of, of our surplus vehicles. Uh, they showed us a figure they, in 2017, they, they uh, sold over 1.1 million vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the average return was 110% over blue, 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 uh, blue Book value. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, that's pretty good. And even they, they, they showed us some things that they've taken and you know, we get $2,000, it might be worth 500 or something. They have, they have access to those type of markets. So mm -hmm. that, that'd be great for us. Um, we've, uh, they're currently working with ICOE, uh, IV Housing Authority, City of Calexico, they just started with uh, Hopeville Unified School District. Mm -hmm. We've spoken with uh, IVHA, we, ICOE, I, I think you've spoken with the City of Calexico. <laughs> and the reviews are better than good, which is, whoa. I mean, it's hard to find a complaint, yeah. which, was, it was, which was interesting. I, I, I had didn't come across any complaints. Um, the quote from uh, the ICOE person I spoke with says that they come as, a, as advertised. So, and, and they're all using uh, the fleet uh, fuel card system. Mm -hmm. it, it provides lots of tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, they have better uh, fuel prices from mm -hmm. my understanding. Uh, I think in the past we've had problems, uh, issues getting people or companies to bid on the fuel. Yeah. Um, Just more efficient process altogether. Yeah. Technology, and you know. Yeah. 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 So, and, yeah. And, and of course they have a, a, a web-based reporting yeah. collection of data. Absolutely. Uh, uh, that kind of thing that would help us uh, streamline and improve record keeping and the tracking of the data, which is a very manual process now. Um, so that's what we're hoping to read back to you with more detail uh, for an action item as early as maybe uh, uh, next next meeting. Whenever we present, if we do to you guys, uh, sorry, to the council. <laughs> um, We'll have a representative from uh, Enterprise to answer any questions that you may have. I can go into deeper details if needed, but uh, is there any questions? Things are, no, a great overview of, of things to come. So, I mean, I think it you know is hopeful, but definitely, yeah. Oh, and Mayor sounds like Warden, we have if I add. just um, a couple placeholders to maybe think about as uh, we prepare the action item. We're going to continue to check references and experiences of other public agencies. There are definitely trade-offs in this arrangement. Probably the biggest one is control. Uh, having control of our fleet and control of repair schedules. Um, also, the solution that our traditional model takes care of both passenger vehicles and large equipment and things like lawnmowers, smaller equipment. So there are items that would be excluded from the enterprise uh, relationship. They are willing to work with us on tracking the needs of our larger equipment, but uh, their ability to assist with acquisition or possibly maintenance uh, will be a um, not as extensive uh, a set of offerings as uh, 
what's provided for passenger vehicles. Mm -hmm. The other piece of it, because we, we have uh, begun to hear from uh, some vendors, potential vendors in uh, our local jurisdiction that are interested in having a contract uh, for service with us directly, we're, we're going to be evaluating the speed to solution and the financial advantages of doing piggyback versus going out to bid. Piggyback would literally uh, provide us with an opportunity for almost seamless transition mm -hmm. to the traditional fleet, non-large vehicles, non-lawnmowers yeah. being picked up by an entity that's got a proven track record. The network that they're using for all repairs, they'll go to all efforts to utilize Brawley-based businesses. Uh, first and if for some reason we need to go outside of our city limits we can extend that that uh, service area beyond but it, it does provide for an interesting they negotiate all the rates for repairs everything's pre-established mm -hmm. off their rate schedule and they they work with a party inside of the agency to determine the best next step for a vehicle uh, its mileage and its maintenance needs mm -hmm. We will have to think differently about the way we manage our fleet because that format of supervisor, historically it's been supervisor and two mechanics. Uh, what we need inside of the organization um, is something uh, that would change because a point of contact uh, that's got some financial um, awareness and is smart from a, a the point of view of a, a fleet's needs, it, it's finding analytical in nature too. Right, a, yeah. a, a a talent that matching the needs with the talent that that can work. Now, as we spoke with other agencies, we've learned that they're using a someone inside of the finance department environment as the primary point of contact. We don't have roles like analysts that are part of our, our finance operations. So we need to kind of work through those elements and also recognize that all the running around that our mechanics and supervisors do to, to get vehicles to locations when we're not uh, performing the repairs ourselves, that is something uh, that we still need to carry out as an activity because mm -hmm. Enterprise isn't assigning personnel to come drive our vehicle, mm -hmm. pick them up and mm -hmm. take them. Yeah. Right. Uh, so there are pieces of this that we, we still are working to untangle and make sure that our department's essential needs are taken care of uh, and that we're not kind of jumping into these waters before mm -hmm. we've considered. It, it, it will be a change for us that we've got an experience, a, a number of experiences with outsourcing, whether it's trash or street sweeping, that I think have uh, proven beneficial to the city, definitely more cost effective, but trade-offs from quality control too that yeah. are they're, they're different they're different yeah. arrangements they're very expensive to maintain when they're in-house uh, mm -hmm. when we outsource it less costly but uh, definitely that pick the, the resident who picks up the phone and has a need immediately we don't have the ability to immediately mobilize sure. either but there is I mean there's absolute um, benefit in doing things under contract like that there is I mean just because they're focused on just that they just tend to do it well, like web-based applications mm -hmm. where there's tracking of fuel, those sorts of things. I mean, it just, it works. There's a reason why it works, because it's just a proven, <coughs> tested system. So. Well, and what we've seen has been extremely positive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, and I think if you have the presentation, the, our goal today was to kind of do a reintroduce. We've talked about it in the past. We're a lot closer today than we've been um, in prior cycles and with the staffing levels changes we do need we have temporary arrangements in place with supervision temporarily assigned mm -hmm. uh, and one mechanic uh, currently working on our fleet so we we're going to need to we used to have men hanging off the back of a trash truck picking up trash in alleyways I mean it's just different I mean right. it mm -hmm. just takes getting used to things you know? Rosanna do you know what uh, what size vehicles they stop at. So do they offer up to like an F-250 yeah, and nothing bigger? That's basically... Uh, everything, all our fleet, including police vehicles, they can procure uh, with the exception of like the loaders, fire engines, those type yeah. of heavy duty mm -hmm. vehicles and not the riding lawnmowers either. So, um, but, uh, so yeah, the, any of those, the vehicle uh, fleets, they, they, they can get. 
but things like the sewer vac truck, yeah. the specialty uh, pieces of equipment that are yep. costly and have very specific needs, mm. that is, those are, uh, his, they're, yep. they're traditionally excluded from their model. They are working yep. with us to see if there's a method for incorporate, incorporating them into the maintenance approach. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. where we need to sort through those mm -hmm. details to be sure yeah. it's a fit for us. It wouldn't. They wouldn't be leasing those vehicles, but they would include it as part of. So you can just wrap it up in there. Right. Yeah. And so, so even including like small dump trucks, they. That's part of their. Mm -hmm. I don't no. think. I don't Not think. But like yeah. a regular pickup up yeah. to yeah. a yeah. three quarter yeah. or one ton right. pickup right. and everything yeah. below yeah. that, mm -hmm. excluding yeah. lawnmowers. Yeah, and lawnmowers on the small end, but then everything that's a specialty. Yeah. A specialty, a bulldozer, you know, things that have a license plate assigned to them, but are not your typical units on mm -hmm. the road. Um, they are typically excluded. What about monster so, trucks? Monster so I guess, I mean, all of the vehicles will be looked at if we're going to switch over to something like this. So my, so I was thinking, for example, of the recent purchase that we did of the animal control uh, truck with a special cabinet with the air conditioned cabinet like would that be an exception or do we if we're going to go to something like this it's going to be all or nothing pretty much uh, so uh, there's a number of different arrangements including that they would only take non large vehicles um, so something like the animal control vehicle we think it's going to last us a very long time right. but, you know the 10 year time horizon is our hope for mm -hmm. what we paid for that year what about in dog years what would that be in dog <laughs> years yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we paid a lot for that, but, you know, that's why I was thinking. Um, okay. Uh, but but uh, let me give you an example. We talked in our budget workshop about new units that we aim to purchase that are needed for uh, the agency's work. And so instead of purchasing those vehicles it, it, at a single dollar amount, uh, all up front, all in at once, we would look at whether it makes more sense to do a lease, mm -hmm. leasing arrangement, which minimizes the number of dollars um, associated with acquiring the asset or acquiring mm -hmm. the, the, the vehicle for use mm -hmm. and free up our dollars otherwise. Um, interestingly, the animal control vehicle is a piggyback purchase, just so you're mm -hmm. aware. So this is kind of a very rare opportunity to piggyback on purchasing fuel and, uh, or lease, uh, excuse me, leasing. Wait, that can be purchased through yeah. them too. Yeah. It's, it's um, not, uh, yeah. Fuel and maintenance. Yeah. And, and it's okay. not an all or nothing. Uh, we could, we could, depending okay. on what other available yeah. funding sources, we could go that route with them and they would still. Okay. Uh, we could still purchase the vehicle through them and fund it with other other dollars, and they would still be included in the maintenance program, uh, just like they would if we were leasing it from them. As long as we purchase it through them, which uh, they're they're at the they're they're coming straight from the factory. You order them how you want, and uh, you know yeah. you want a steering wheel or not, they'll, yeah. they'll do that yeah. for you. You know. But, but the but, reason I like it though is okay. just because it's running it more like a business, and so mm -hmm. it's controlling costs, controlling yeah. cash flow. Yes. It's making things a lot more predictable. So yeah. that's the reason I would be in favor of something like that. You know, I, I think operations, you, you guys will continue to look at all the other alternatives for yes. the specialized equipment, but um, it suffice it to say we live in a valley where there's a lot of specialized equipment with farm implements and those type, you know, support and, and heavy equipment. So hopefully there's alternatives that, that I know definitely would be looked at. Right. So very good. No, I, I appreciate any other Thank questions. You. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll say we'll move to item six, informational report. Uh, this is the record of building permits um, that's included in our packet here for uh, on pages 324, 325. Any questions for observation? Very good. We'll move, if not, to item seven, which is city council member reports. And we'll begin with council member Hamby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a lot to report, but I, I did uh, get to participate with the boot committee, beautifying our old town on a cleanup day at the old uh, Cook's Market across from Imperial Stores, that whole parking lot and uh, fairways. We had a nice group of people there to cut grass and trim some shrubs, pick up trash. It, uh, it looks a lot better. Um, I did receive uh, contact from Joel Sanchez over on Willard Avenue and uh, 
asking about the, the process for petitioning uh, to get speed bumps put in. And I appreciate Ms. Sanchez coming and talking to us about that. And then um, I'd like the record to show that uh, Chief Sawyer brought in a tree and set it <laughs> on the carpet just outside the door of the chambers here. Uh, Hopefully it <laughs> doesn't have any soil coming out the bottom of it. <laughs> uh, that the Comité Civico del Valle donated or is wanting to donate to place outside of our city manager's window. So she has something pretty to look at. <laughs> I guess there's a tree out there now that's that's on its last leg, even though it's not that old. So, uh, but it was uh, it's donated with uh, the goodwill of John Sample, Johnny on Wheels, as he calls himself, and uh, Johnny Hernandez. They want to organize a planting, volunteer planting. So, I'm sure they have been and will be in contact with the city manager over that. But. Uh, they want to turn Brawley green, and I think that's that's a that's a great effort to be made. Brawley is better when it's green, yeah. or purple, right? Or purple, yeah. yeah. A that's a be pretty tree. Multicolored there. Just just purple leaf, right there. <laughs> if you don't want it, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank yeah, you. Beautiful All right, that's it for my report. Very good. Thank you, Councilmember Hamby, Councilmember Couchman. Okay. Um, I attended the McDonald's ribbon cutting. So we finally have, well, McDonald's has been open, but they did their, their grand opening ceremony. It was really nice. And we got a tour of the facility, very nice, very modern facility. Uh, really, really a lot of activity over there. And there were a lot of people there. Um, the more uh, flags on, at the cemetery on, prior to Memorial Day, I had the opportunity to help the Girl Scouts and 4-H clubs and some other individuals at the um, at the Riverview Cemetery to put the flags on the uh, military graves. Uh, I also uh, attended the Memorial Day ceremony out there at Riverview along with several of the council members and we were asked to speak and we did uh, some small speeches out there and I thought it was a well attended event and the weather was real nice so that's always good. I did attend Clyde Shields, uh, a member of our community who recently passed away. I did attend his visitation. I was not available on a Saturday for his funeral, but I did attend the visitation representing the city and, and myself as a Rotarian, and he was a Rotarian also. So I did that. I also attended the Julian Old Time Fiddlers competition. Uh, that was interesting up in Julian. That was a big crowd up there too for that activity. Um, the only other thing I would like to mention is on Facebook, I was asked by a former Brawley resident who now lives in Idlewild to meet with their mayor now, I thought I could borrow the animal control vehicle because their mayor is a dog. And so a golden retriever, I think it's a golden retriever. And so what I thought I could do is take the animal control vehicle, we could put some fear into them, you know, get the loop out, you know, we could meet with their dog and their dog mayor up there in Idlewild. And so I thought about doing that, you know, and I think I could take George with me if necessary. You know. But uh, no, so that's my report. Uh, I see the city out there working hard. I see everybody out and around doing a lot of work and uh, I certainly appreciate that on behalf of the city employees and, and all the people in the, in the city. Looks like it's warming up so we have summer to look forward to so and all those activities. So thank you, that's my report. Very good, thank you Councilmember Couchman. I thought you were gonna mention the dog's better looking than Brawley's mayor, oh, but uh, we'll go yeah. to Councilmember Nava. Thank you, I also uh, participated in, and went to the McDonald's ribbon cutting, that's a nice new facility, and there's a lot of people working there, so that's that's a good yeah, thing, you know, and yeah. so it keeps, keeps uh, things flowing, so good for them. Um, also went to the General Assembly and Economic Summit that was hosted by ICTC, SCAG, and IBDC, really really good information um, that came from it I was only able to to attend the, the morning portion but that's really kind of the meat of what the discussion was on is really good information I do have the presentation I'll forward it all out um, that was presented on the economics of uh, the county and really really good information um, uh, also attended small business day and, and career fair recently that was uh, hosted by Rowo Bank um, the Brawley Chamber of Commerce and SBA and some other um, lenders. I was a panel speaker there on alternative financing for commercial lending and other things, equipment lending. It was actually a, a, a good time to, to share some knowledge there. I enjoyed it and that was, uh, that was good. Uh, I'm, I'm spending a little bit more time with the Imperial County Association of Realtors and I've told them how important that, they're, you know, that their voice is and so I scheduled some time to meet with um, city staff in El Centro 
and I'm hoping to do the same here in Brawley. And really the, the focus is, I'm calling it a walk and talk tour. And so it's just gonna be walking and talking. Uh, we're visiting the pavilion, um, um, uh, Martin Luther King, um, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Pavilion in El Centro and visiting the location just to see it, but also walking and talking with um, the community services director who happens to be my wife, but also meeting with the uh, city staff to talk about what's happening within the city and uh, like economic development, commercial development, those sorts of things. So just getting um, the Board of Realtors, at least some members of them, um, you know, getting them the knowledge of like housing development and commercial development. I want to do the same thing here in Brawley. Maybe we can feature, just off the top of my head, seeing Mike York here, maybe we can visit a fire station number two or, or even the fire station here on Main Street. Just give them something to, to walk and talk about and then just give them, we can invite our city manager, of course, and maybe our, our finance director to talk about some of uh, the progress and some of the planned development. I know we just approved the, the uh, housing development here. Just talk about the things that are happening because that's, you know, that's, they're a 400 plus member strong organization and they represent people throughout the Imperial County. So mm -hmm. the more they know, the better it is for everybody. And so they can help spread that message out there. And you know, when you think about it, and we don't often think about housing as um, investment in our community, but when you think about it and people buying homes throughout the Imperial Valley, that represents millions and millions of dollars of investment. So that's, that's important, not just that, but I mean, look at the millions of dollars in construction that are taking place, for, for example, here or in El Centro. So important things to consider. So I hope to bring that same concept here in Brawley. We're starting that on Thursday and we're gonna do a, a walk and talk then. So um, uh, also attended the ICTC meeting and I, I'll just take a minute if you will. Um, I do wanna comment on um, Andy Reese Jr.'s fight this past weekend. Oh. For those of you who know me well enough, you know I love boxing. I don't follow really any other sport but boxing. And um, you know, the heavyweight division has been a jab for the past like 10, 12 years. It's been, you know, uh, Klitschko for about 10 years, and then Lennox Lewis before that, it's just a jab, that's all they used. So really boring fights, at least in the heavyweight division, for many years. And for a few years, I've watched Andy Reese Jr. being different than, than the rest. You know, he's, he's a bigger guy, and so a lot of people didn't give him a lot of uh, opportunity or chance, you know, especially casual boxing fans. But he had proven himself, at least to me, um, when he fought um, Joseph Parker in New Zealand uh, back three years ago, and he did well. He went 12 rounds, he wasn't exhausted, and so the difference, and I've said this from, you know, many years back, but especially lately, the difference between Andy Reese Jr. and other boxers is that he is not afraid to engage. And there's a big difference in the heavyweight division because boxers are afraid to engage. They keep a distance and that's why you have like Klitschko being successful with the jab, you have Lennox Lewis being successful with the jab because that's all they did. I saw Klitschko fight one fight with just a jab the entire time, boom, boom, just at a distance and he won. And it's super boring, it's super boring to watch. And this is just honestly, in my own opinion, the most impressive heavyweight fight that I've seen in decades. And not only that, it's probably gonna go down in history as one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight, uh, in the heavyweight division. It was amazing, I lost my voice for two days because of it. I am not, I am not exaggerating, I was so excited just to see, and then plus he's local, and you know, that's all good stuff, and so. Good for him, and uh, I just wanted to comment that, you know, we have, we've had other athletes and other uh, talent here in the Imperial County, but he's a big one, and, you know, boxing is, is huge yeah. all over the world, you know? And so um, I hope that, you know, I know Imperial's working on something, but, you know, it, it'd be great to have some recognition out here when he comes down here. And, you know, I, I was just very impressed by his, um, his driving ability. Anthony Joshua, undefeated. Every th everybody thought he was unstoppable. They were looking for the Wilder and his, you know the fight with Wilder. But you know now Andy Reese Jr. put a big dent in that plan. So anyway, totally exciting, and uh, he probably will be enjoying McDonald's here in Broadway. You know, so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's even better. So anyway, yeah. thank you, uh, Councilmember Nava. I'll just uh, just to add on to that the significance of it. These are the things that actually people worldwide, when they say they put you on the map, yeah. these are just the things. Once again, it, it's. 
in an instant. I, I think it, he's he's obviously come up in the age of social media, mm -hmm. so I know he's got. I, I think I, I heard his his followership or whatever just blew oh, up. Yeah, so um, talk about a, 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 a sort of a force multiplier. Uh, not to mention other sports and athletes, but it is obviously a, a big thing. So thank you, Councilmember Nava, for mentioning that. Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, thank you. you. I think he has an, a second career. If he wanted to go into a boxing announcer, yeah. yeah. he'd be great mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. He's um, refereeing. And I, I'm, I just want to sure. say I'm, I'm not really a fan of, I'm a fan of all sports because my husband is a fan of all sports. And so I've noticed that I've been watching a lot more boxing mm -hmm. and, and uh, baseball and foot, whatever sport is on TV. So I did get to see that fight, and I, I was impressed, too. Yeah, so I was uh, excited, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I've been a little, uh, kind of busy. Also, I attended the, I, I was honored to attend the Memorial Day event out at the Riverview Cemetery on Memorial Day. That was uh, well attended. It was a bit windy, but um, it, it was nice. It was very nice. Um, and then I also attended um, the Pine, Pioneer Memorial Hospital ribbon cutting for their new it's called a Tesla MRI machine, and it's uh, apparently the very first one in the valley. Um, and we got a tour. Uh, we actually got to see the machine, and I guess if we even wanted to go into it, they would have done the honors, but that was very yeah. nice. Um, and I mean, happy to see that we have this new technology here in our valley, in our hospital, so um, very happy for that. Um, I, attended, I also attended the Imperial Valley Economic uh, Summit and General Assembly. And I have to say that this one, um, I was impressed with the quality of the speakers. Um, mm -hmm. We attend a lot of economic development uh, seminars throughout you know, our, our years here. And I, I think this particular one, they did bring some uh, real quality speakers on different um, various subjects that I had not heard before. And so I was really impressed with, with, um, with the topics that were covered and the people that represent it, like as an example, just so you kind of get an idea on binational opportunities, how to work with, with Mexico, and then of course they talked about the NAFTA agreement and working with Canada, but it focused primarily on working with Mexicali. Um, topics uh, such as access to education, so we had all the, the different, um, the president from IVC and then our ICOET uh, superintendent, different people that gave us a, a real good view of what's happening with our education system here in Imperial County and access to health care, all the different uh, representatives from El Centro, Brawley, and then the new Clinicas that if you haven't seen this big building on your way out of El Centro on Interstate 8, it's a huge building. I first thought it was a big hotel that was coming in uh, to the area and it's actually the Clinicas de Salud that opened that big facility out there. So it's kind of like a one-stop clinic uh, where they have everything in there, pharmacy, lab work, and everything. So that was all very interesting. I enjoyed um, tremen tremendously all the, all the uh, topics that were covered. So I thank, thank you for the opportunity to, to attend that. And then I also uh, was able to make it to the McDonald's ribbon cutting. I've been through McDonald's drive through several times since it opened, and so got to go inside and take a tour of the whole thing into the freezer even. Um, so that was, um, they're all very happy. The owner, um, apparently he owns uh, several franchises, right? Quite a few franchises. And uh, so, um, like I told him that I think most people didn't know that we were missing McDonald's until it closed down and then every other person I talked to in Brawley asked me, when are they going to open McDonald's and they better open it. <laughs> they were kind of afraid that it wasn't going to come back because of all that dirt that was uh, being moved around. So um, that's about it. And I'll, just a reminder that um, the Brawley Chamber wanted me to remind everyone that the uh, Branding Iron Awards dinner is scheduled for June 21st, June 21st. so you can mark your calendars for that. Yeah. Very good. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Howdy, I'll just kind of give my quick hit. So um, I was unable to attend the Riverview Cemetery event um, because I would have been late and uh, a little sweaty from another uh, Memorial Day event. Um, that involves basically the whole globe, the CrossFit community, in honor of uh, um, uh, Lieutenant Murphy. So, and it is affectionately known as the Murph. So I participated in that on Memorial Day. Um, prior to that, EMS Week um, events, not just here in the Valley, but really for me throughout Southern California. Um, I think I mentioned that last time, it was the week of going into EMS Week. 
Um, the PMH uh, ribbon cutting uh, for the three Tesla uh, MRI machine, again, fantastic. Um, I had a meeting regarding sand season coming up and uh, uh, some of the uh, potential events. I think we've talked in concept, so just more to come on that that I hope to report out uh, where we can really showcase leading up to that uh, um, sort of the usual sand season kickoff that's usually in October of what we as a city uh, can maybe uh, rally around uh, potential events, potential product promotion, um, bringing some of our commercial partners in uh, of, of really attracting regionally, not just uh, um, our, our local residents here, but uh, more to come on that. And then I um, had a um, short meeting and a little bit of preview of things to come for this year's Cattle Call festivities with the Cattle Call Committee. So that's my report. Um, and I appreciate all my council uh, members' report. Obviously, we've, uh, despite it seems a little slower and warmer, we stay quite busy. So again, appreciate that report out. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which will be the city manager's report. Nothing further at this time. Thank you. Uh, next item will be city attorney's report. So uh, on Mayor Novice topic, uh, my, my secretary is Andy Reese Jr.'s cousin, and I was very relieved that she came to work on Monday. <laughs> I was afraid she was going to join his entourage, <laughs> and she no still kidding. might, I think. That's fantastic. <laughs> so we can get autographs. Fantastic. No so, uh, very good. Um, item 10, city clerk's report. And Andy Reese, he'll be on Jimmy Kindle tonight at 1130. There, there we go. go. There we go. We continue. <laughs> and he's also related. He's my cousin's nephew. Oh, now he's related to everybody. Now he's related to everybody. That's the way it now he's my cousin's nephew's to neighbor's <laughs> neighbor <laughs> boy when he was Jimmy, Jimmy yeah. Kimmel tonight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. at 1130. Forgot to mention I'm related. So to yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Very good. We'll move to item 11, closed session. Uh, we'll convene to that. We'll take a few minutes. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Thank you. Luke.